want to recognize and just to thank our um, moderator, uh, Madame Mildred Gessa. You know, Mildred has the power, the energy, the flame. Today, I didn't want to wake up, but when she told me she'd be there, I said, who am I? If Mildred can come and say, we want to celebrate, I want to stand with everyone as we celebrate, I had to be here. So I really want to just thank Ms. Mildred for accepting the challenge. If there's anything I can just challenge to be here, to stand up and defy all odds. You know, we have something we say, defying against all odds. And women are known to defy odds all the time. Mildred's passion is the placenta. And she will talk about the placenta. She cannot, she always talks about the placenta, somehow, somehow. And during the weekend, I was in a, in a meeting with women from Polynesia, and they shared something about this, they called it the umbilical cord, right? I don't know whether, what's the difference between the umbilical cord and the placenta? Uh, Mildred, you tell us. But they talked about the umbilical cord, and they say when a child is born, they bury it in the ground. They bury it in the ground. And the reason they bury it in the ground is because they believe that as people, we are connected to Mother Earth. So the reason why we call Mother Earth is because we have our roots in Mother Earth. So when we are taking care of the environment, we are taking care and we are responsible of our mother who is Mother Earth. So I found that quite interesting. And I thought this project that Mildred has been passionate about, talking about the placenta, it's just not an African, but across the continent. If we really go deep down to indigenous roots, there's something about the placenta, there's something about the umbilical cord which connects all of us. So I'm very happy today to be connected to all of you and you know, just to stand with you in solidarity and to welcome you but most, I'm so honored that out of everything happening on International Women's Day, you decided to honor Feminist Invitation. So for me, that is so, so important. It's so dear to my heart. And I just want you to clap for yourselves for really honoring our invitation. Thank you. And to also our speakers, our Meshimiwas who are here, Keopa, we partner with them in this program on women's political participation. Um, we've also partnered with um, the registrar of political parties and the women's rights organizations and the media. The media is so important to us because we know every time we talk about women's leadership, it's how women are portrayed in the media which is important and we know that the fourth arm of the state is the media. Everything starts with the media. The media is the mouthpiece. They are the megaphone of everything around women's leadership, in fact. And we are partnering with them in this journey to make sure that we get more women nominated, more women participating and elected. And I just want to challenge you to say, how about, as women, we start supporting our women candidates now. Getting their agenda. I know there's a lot of politics around why should you support a woman because she's just a woman. But let me tell you, across the continent, women who take the bold step to be in politics are not just women. And they need our support. And we can propel them to push our agenda. No man is going to push our agenda. They will try and they will push it to their own advantage to get your vote and your interest as women. So that's the most political thing about having women participating in politics is as women, we should be supporting each other and we can support each other. And we also have to know that our decisions obviously are autonomous, but how about we start by 
giving financially, because the major barrier when it comes to women's participation, it is obviously the violent landscape, but it's also the money for our political space is monetized. It is so monetized, unfortunately. And unless women have the resources, it will be difficult for them to participate. So whatever we do, let's see how do we support more women? How do we start having charmers? And we start early. We start early. Believe me, the men we see who are in politics, they are bankrolled by either some private company or some other group. We have to have that wisdom to also start supporting our women. So International Women's Day, um, we want to choose, we want to challenge. And personally, I choose to start challenging those barriers, those myths that make sure women, that do not allow women to take their positions of power. All those things that you get from the household, you know, when we talk about the personal is political. So the personal things, you know, starting to challenge that self-doubt that you might have in your mind, you know, telling your family, I want to be in politics, challenging all those things, all those myths, all those words that are said about, oh, women in politics are loose. That's what I want to choose to challenge today and say, I want to challenge all those things that are a barrier to women making a decision about what they want to do with their bodies, what they want to do with their education, when they want and where they want to sit and stand for, if it's standing in, uh, for a position. You know, I know it also happens here, yeah, but in, in Zim, if I'm to stand, I have to decide if I want to stand in the constituency where I was married, they'll say, you are a daughter-in-law. I'm sure you've heard this story, it's a broken record. You are a daughter-in-law, but that issue around a woman's identity and her not being able to choose to say, I want to just stand for this constituency. I want to stand for this community. I want to stand for this cause. That is what I want to challenge. And I want to challenge it from my personal, um, you know, personally, but also uh, challenging it in the community, in the families, and in the work that we do. Challenging that violence, that toxic, um, environment that women find themselves in when they are vocal online when they say their mind online those are the things that i want to choose to challenge this international women's day but most importantly i also want us to celebrate we should find time to celebrate to just say today is our day no matter what people say in fact today we should be uh, they should be clearing traffic for us in <coughs> along the road as long as we have these women must lead they should just clear the road because we are saying women are coming and there's a song we we sing you know it's an old song from my mother's time but i know this song was sang here in kenya um just before the benjin uh, at the women's Con fourth world conference and it's a song that african women were singing and it goes as Women are coming around the corner. Women are coming around the corner. Does anyone remember that song? But essentially, there was, it's a song. Um, so it says, women are coming around the corner. So they'll be saying, beware, women are coming around the corner. If you are comfortable in that seat, beware, women are coming around the corner. If you are about to abuse or if you are thinking of abusing women, beware, women are coming around the corner. So I think we are at a point in time globally where even as we talk about COVID-19 and we've seen how it has impacted women differently, it's, I think this is about time. People have to hear us. People have seen how countries which are led by women have dealt differently with the COVID pandemic. So as women, we are leaders and women must lead. Even now, this theme of International Women's Day, which is calling us to stand up, to lead. Let's lead even in the discussions around uh, the vaccines. 
let's lead in everything to do with the, the plans and all the, you know, the, the stimulus packages. Where are they going? Let's voice out as women, let's be heard. We know and we should be leading. So I just want to just say to you, thank you, Asante Nisana.